Welcome to all of you on this uh, lecture series or tutorial series on the topic of corrosion in refineries or corrosion in petroleum industry. Uh, when we try to discuss about uh, or when we start the discussion about corrosion, then what we find that that uh, discussion is broadly divided into four segments. The one segment discuss about the impact of corrosion. Uh, whether it could be economical impact or it could be uh, environmental impact or it could be uh, impact on safety point of view, whatever it be, it could be. Uh, this uh, uh, segment discuss about uh, uh, or analyze the impact of corrosion. Now another segment is on uh, discussion about mechanism of corrosion, that how corrosion is taking place, what is the science behind it. Another segment discuss about the methods to control the corrosion, that how we can uh, reduce the rate of corrosion. And the fourth segment uh, uh, discuss about monitoring of corrosion, that whether this material is uh, corroding or not, whether we can uh, use this material for longer period or whether we need to replace that material, that is uh, basically comes under this discussion. Now for this uh, tutorial series, I will be focusing mostly on this uh, corrosion mechanism and corrosion control methods only. I won't discuss about impact of corrosion because uh, it is very obvious that uh, it is very detrimental. So no need to discuss about it, this and I will also discuss about, uh, I mean I won't discuss about corrosion monitoring also. Uh, so, this uh, tutorial series is mostly about corrosion mechanism and corrosion control methods only. Now, question comes uh, for about that uh, for what type of uh, people this uh, lecture series is uh, uh, useful. This uh, lecture series will be useful for production or operation, uh, or operation personnel uh, because uh, we know that uh, in production to avoid corrosion, we dose corrosion inhibitors, uh, we dose neutralizers, we do water washing. Uh, so we need to understand that what will be impact if we uh, increase the rate of uh, uh, neutralizer dosing or if you decrease the rate of uh, neutralizer dosing. I mean what will be the impact of pH. So, uh, uh, so for that we need to understand corrosion mechanism. Not only uh, this, we also need to understand that uh, about uh, when we are going to hand over any equipments. Now, when whenever we going to hand over equipment, uh, we we know that we can't uh, 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 can't flush a, a stainless steel line uh, stainless steel line with uh, fire water uh, because uh, fire water contains chloride. So why we can't flush that? That uh, question will be answered uh, when we understand this corrosion mechanism and also after this handover when an equipment manhole, uh, manhole opens when uh, then we need to understand that understand that where, where, where pyrophoric iron could be so for, uh, starting from operation to equipment handover to the safety all those things uh, will be clear uh, when we understand corrosion mechanism thoroughly so for chemical engineers, it is very much imperative to understand corrosion mechanism and the impacts of different corrosion mechanisms on materials. Now, uh, similarly, for mechanical engineers also, this uh, understanding of this mechanism is very important because they need to understand that for why for some materials we go for post weld heat treatment, PWHT, and why for some material we can't go uh, do this. Uh, why we go for some material for TIG welding and for another materials uh, we go for arc welding. Why we can't go for butt welding or uh, lap joints or butt, butt joints. So all those things can be answered if you understand corrosion mechanism thoroughly. And for inspection engineers, it is very much imperative. The job of inspection engineer to monitor the corrosion. If, if and if they find find that some material is fail, uh, going to failure, failure, then they need to uh, give recommendation to uh, eliminate that uh, failures. And the success of that uh, uh, recommendation will mostly or greatly depends on the determination of the failure mechanism. 
so because uh, if you uh, ha if you have determined uh, incorrectly then instead of uh, uh, reducing that failure uh, failure rate might increase also so a, f a thorough understanding of corrosion mechanism is required for inspection engineers also so for all those engineers uh, who are working in this uh, uh, refinery uh, corrosion mechanism understanding and uh, corrosion control method understanding is very much important so with this uh, motivation let us start our discussion on corrosion uh, so first let us uh, try to uh, define the corrosion we know that in our nature uh, we uh, do not uh, find steel or iron pure iron rather what we find is iron oxide uh, it could be hematite or magnetite whatever it may be but we do not find a steel directly from nature so what we do we refine the iron oxide and convert into a steel or pure iron and this process is very much energy intensive so what happened uh, when we convert iron oxide into a steel the material energy level goes high and we know that in nature material what material tries to be they try to be at lowest possible energy level and uh, this we know that's why uh, in any process where gives free energy minimizes that process becomes spontaneous that occurs naturally without any uh, external forces so what happened this is at higher energy level so it will uh, spontaneously revert back into iron oxide by the uh, so that re uh, rever uh, revert backs process is called corrosion so corrosion uh, the practical definition of corrosion is it is a tendency of material to revert back to its natural state so this is a natural process we can't avoid it uh, it's a tendency of material so only thing is we can reduce the rate of corrosion now this, that was practical definition what is scientific definition the scientific definition is this that corrosion is degradation of a material due to electrochemical or chemical reaction between the material and its environment so what is electrochemical or chemical reaction we will discuss it later but one thing it is very uh, clear that corrosion is the degradation of material due to its interaction with environment okay now corrosion is divided into different uh, types now if you take mechanism as a criteria that how corrosion is taking place corrosion is divided into two different types the one type is electrochemical mechanism where due to electrochemical reaction corrosion is taking place and uh, in electrochemical reaction generally electrolyte is required so generally water is electrolyte so it is also called aqueous corrosion or wet corrosion so in refinery what happens when temperature goes down then a steam condenses into water so it usually occurs at lower temperature so it is also called low temperature corrosion there is another methods by which corrosion can occurs there is no need of uh, electrolyte uh, there is direct chemical reaction between the materials and the uh, dry gases uh, at high temperature so that is that uh, core type of corrosion is also called chemical corrosion or dry corrosion or high temperature corrosion so what we found that in refinery usually uh, below 200 degree celsius uh, electrochemical corrosion take place and above 200 degree celsius dry corrosion take place so let us try to for, uh, let us start discussion about electrochemical corrosion so before we jump over directly on the electrochemical corrosion uh, let us uh, first uh, uh, briefly revise electrochemistry which we have uh, studied in our school level uh, we learned that uh, there is a term called electrochemical cell and that is nothing nothing but a device which convert chemical energy into electrical energy or electrical energy into chemical energy okay so uh, based on this definition it could be of two types one is called galvanic cell which convert chemical energy into electrical energy what happens here here a, no, a spontaneous chemical reaction occurs naturally and the energy liberated by that uh, reaction is converted into electrical energy and there could be another 
type of uh, uh, electrochemical cell called electrolytic cell. Uh, what uh, happened there? There we provide electrical energy to carry out non-spontaneous chemical reaction. So like uh, in electrolysis of water, uh, we generate hydrogen by uh, applying electrical energy to uh, dissociate water. So corrosion usually occurs uh, by this uh, cell, galvanic cell. So we will discuss about galvanic cell only. So this is a typical example of uh, Daniel cell. It is a type of galvanic cell in which there is two electrodes, zinc, zinc is dipped in, uh, dipped in zinc sulfate solution and copper is uh, dipped in copper sulfate solution and these two electrodes is connected with a, a, with an electric wire. So we have learnt in our school that there is a electrochemical series in which metals are arranged based on their electrode potential. So what we have learnt that the metals usually at higher level having very high oxidizing power. So if they will be in contact with metals at lower level then what will they we do they will do they will oxidize the lower level material it means they they will take electrons from them and they will reduce so here copper and zinc is there in that uh, cell so we see that copper and zinc copper is at uh, copper is having higher electrode potential than zinc so what will will what will happen copper will uh, take electron from zinc so zinc will oxidize and two electron will liberated and zinc 2 plus ion will go into the solution and that two electron will uh, travel through this conductor and it will go to copper electrode copper 2 plus electrode will take that electrons and so uh, it will reduce and we know that in electrochemistry the place where oxidation reaction take place we call it anode whether it is electrical uh, electrolytic cell or galvanic cell that definition is true always true and where reduction reaction take place that is called cathode so here zinc will act as anode it will be negatively charged and copper will act as cathode it will be positively charged so what happens when reaction this reaction proceed zinc usually converted into zinc plus zinc 2 plus ion and its thickness will uh, start decreasing so it is it will ultimately corrode so in this uh, galvanic cell what we understand that the the material which acts as anode will corrode ultimately and when we add up these two reaction one is oxidation and another is uh, reduction reaction the net reaction we call it redox reaction okay so uh, uh, one more point from this uh, electrochemical uh, series we understand that the material at higher level usually do not oxidize rather they oxidize the material at lower level so material at higher level will not act as an anode and they will not corrode easily so they are called novel metal like silver uh, gold platinum this type of material is called uh, uh, novel metal and the material at lower level they usually oxidize easily they are called reactive metal base metal or anodic material so what we understand based on that discussion is that for an electrochemical reaction to occur uh, we need four components one is anode where oxidation takes place and that material will corrode ultimately another is cathode where reduction takes place and another requirement is a conductor by which electron will transfer and another requirement is electrolyte by which ions will transfer so far so good no problem we understand very easily but the one question comes into mind is in refinery we never connect two electrode by a uh, wire so how corrosion take place taking place by electrochemical reaction in refinery so to answer that in refinery whatever material we use inside that material there are innumerable micro level anode and cathode like if you take an example of a carbon steel you'll find that inside the material there will be an iron and there will be some places where iron carbide then that iron will act as a anode as an anode and another will act as a cathode so there could be innumerable 
anode and cathode and since uh, material is uh, metal is usually conducted of electron so there is, won't be any requirement of conductors so only one thing is required if electrolyte if electrolyte will be in contact with the material will start corroding so this is an example of carbon steel corrosion where when it is in contact with water so corrosion take place now not only this uh, uh, micro level structure or component difference even a pure metal at two different temperature uh, will uh, corrode because one at uh, one at uh, lower or higher temperature may act as an anode and another at different temperature will act as an uh, as a cathode so that will form a differential temperature cell another possible way is that material is pure but the electrolyte concentration at some place is different and another place is different so L different differential concentration cell will form and there also corrosion take place even in pure mater material due to uh, uh, intermolecular structure difference uh, grain boundary will form at and at grain, grain boundary corrosion could take place so whatever there uh, could be there uh, are always a likelihood that uh, corrosion will take place when it is contact in electrolyte so uh, take an example here here this uh, uh, iron steel uh, uh, this uh, iron this part act as anode so iron uh, is uh, oxidizing and iron 2 plus iron is going into the solution and H plus ion from the solution is coming here and electron is moving due to conductivity of metals electron is going there H plus ion is consumed by sorry electron is consumed by H plus ion it converted into H atom and two H such atom uh, combine and form H2 gas so here cathodic reaction is H plus ion reduction anodic reaction is iron oxidation so what you find that in refinery mostly there are three different types of cathodic reaction usually occurs in ST medium H plus ion uh, consume electrons and convert it into H2 gas in neutral medium if it, oxygen is dissolved then it uh, consume H electrons and convert it into hydroxide ion and if medium contains oxygen as well as it is acidic then also uh, this reaction take place so you usually three different types of cathodic reaction take place and in that way iron steel or uh, zinc or whatever copper electro uh, copper steel corroded copper nickel whatever may be so it uh, that that forms an anode and these three reaction forms as a cathode so we will summarize it like uh, in refinery uh, iron goes for an anodic reaction in acidic medium this uh, H plus ion act as a uh, electron consumers so this is this might be a cathodic reaction in neutral medium this might might be a cathodic reaction and in acid solution where oxygen is also possible this could also be a cathodic reaction now we understand from uh, chemical reaction that if any chemical reaction is taking place then what happens if you are removing the product uh, then the reaction will move towards the forward direction so in the same way here <coughs> if you are consuming more electrons then what will happen iron will force to produce more electron because electron is consuming whatever electron is producing is consuming so rate of uh, anodic reaction will be high and so corrosion rate will also be high so based on this discussion we understand that if we one of my material is under uh, deaerated HCl solution and another uh, the same material is under aerated HCl solution then corrosion rate of aerated HCl, HCl solution will be much higher compared to deaerated HCl solution because at aerated HCl solution there will be two cathodic reaction will be taking place the one and this another so electron consumption will be very high so it will force to uh, produce high electrons so iron will anode at very fast rate also if you add some 
uh, metal ions which can be reduced in that uh, condition then corrosion rate will be even higher so based on this di the discussion we understand that anodic and cathodic reactions are mutually dependent and so if uh, one rate goes high then another rate automatically goes high and if one rate goes low then another rate also goes low so let us take an example uh, this is an example of corrosion of uh, iron which when it is immersed in water and water is uh, aerated water so their anodic reaction is uh, will be this and cathodic reaction will be there in neutral medium this uh, hydro hydroxide ion will form and hydroxide ion will react with iron 2 plus ion and will form FeOH the whole 2 so in generally it is unstable in oxygenated solution and it will uh, react with oxygen it will convert into FeOH the whole 3 and we all know that this is the rust so in that way electrochemical by electrochemical mechanism iron will corrode in wet environment okay so by understanding this only this is very uh, fundamental understanding of corrosion uh, we can uh, we can understand the different methods of corrosion protection by uh, by this fundamental understanding only we understand that for electrochemical corrosion to occur we need uh, we need four different components anode cathode conductor and electrolyte and we understand that metal is always in a, a conductor so we don't have any control over there anode and, anode and cathode again we don't have any control over there but we have certainly a control over electrolyte so in most of the cases in refinery electrolyte is moisture or water so if we avoid uh, water formation uh, so if we remove the electrolyte then that this corrosion won't take place so that's why in overhead uh, of many columns what we try to maintain our temperature above dew point so that there won't be any water there won't be any electrolytes so won't be any corrosion take place now this is uh, about electrolyte we can also remove some of the component from cathodic reaction so if we remove oxygen then in neutral medium corrosion rate of corrosion will go dramatically down because in cathodic uh, in neutral medium oxygen react with uh, electron and water and even in acidic medium if we remove oxygen then rate of reaction uh, rate of corrosion will go very down and if we if we can't do this all those things then we can coat the metal by a paint or some different materials so that uh, uh, ions can't go to the surface uh, for corrosion there is another way we, we uh, doge corrosion inhibitor and we will discuss at length in about corrosion uh, inhibitor uh, in subsequent lecture but uh, for now uh, we we understand that in corrosion in, in inhibitor one type of corrosion inhibitor what it does it forms a film on metal surface uh, or what it does is interfere with the anodic or cathodic reaction different type of corrosion inhibitors so one type what it does a form a film so iron can go to directly on metal surface and another way another uh, uh, corrosion inhibitor what it does it it reduces anodic reaction so ultimately corrosion will reduce or some another type of corrosion inhibitor what it does it reduces cathodic reaction so ultimately corrosion will uh, rate of corrosion will goes down okay and there is another way uh, in which uh, uh, what we understand see what we understand from electrochemical uh, mechanism that uh, uh, the material uh, which act as an anode will ultimately corrode so if uh, somehow the material which we want to protect if somehow we convert it as a cathode then it won't corrode so this is the basis of cathodic protection uh, in which what we do is uh, 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 we control the corrosion of a metal surface by making it at the uh, it the cathode of an electrochemical cell now this is also of two types uh, one is called galvanic uh, uh, or sacrificial anode and another is called impressed current cathodic protection 
Now in galvanic uh, protection uh, or sacrificial anode what we do is uh, uh, we attach to the surface which we want to protect we attach a piece of a more electrochemically uh, active metal uh, so the material which is having more electro uh, more negative electrode potential that type of material we directly attach to the surface so in that case what will happen will a galvanic cell will produce in which the surface suppose this surface we wanted to protect so we will attach a more electrochemically uh, active metal to the surface directly so in that sense the an, a, a galvanic cell will produce and in which uh, this more electrochemically uh, active metal will be have now as an anode and this uh, surface will be have now as an uh, as a cathode so this will provide ele electron to the surface the surface um, will reduce and this will uh, uh, oxidize and it will ultimately corrode that's why this uh, uh, more electrochemically active metal uh, is called sacrificial anode uh, this uh, uh, this is the one method and what happened for larger structure uh, this uh, sacrificial anode method uh, uh, is not sufficient because it uh, uh, do not uh, provide uh, sufficient electro uh, electron uh, to provide protection for larger uh, surfaces. Uh, so in that case what we do is we provide electron from an uh, external source uh, and that method is called impressed current cathodic protection. So uh, what uh, it consists of? It consists of a node connected to a DC power source or a transformer rectifier connected to AC power. So in that way electron now flow to the surfaces uh, so uh, suppose iron was uh, uh, oxidizing and iron was producing electrons so now since we are providing electron from an electro uh, from an external sources so it won't uh, oxidize uh, and it won't become a source of electron so it will ultimately reduce and in that way the protection will occur now this is all about uh, the first type of uh, corrosion mechanism is electrochemical corrosion me mechanism now let us uh, start discussion about uh, different uh, another type of corrosion mechanism that is called dry corrosion or high temperature corrosion uh, it is another it is also a redox type of reaction uh, but since it does not involve any electrolyte or water so it is called dry corrosion because it is usually occurs because of uh, chemical reaction between the material and high temperature gases it's a direct chemical reaction it usually occurs above 204 degrees celsius that's why it is high temperature corrosion and what it does what uh, happen is at metals again oxidation take place and at uh, uh, suppose it is uh, uh, this corrosion occurring at high temperature oxygen so oxygen will take that electron and it will reduce so it is again in uh, redox reaction but only thing is since it is no, it does not involve electrolyte so we call it uh, a dry corrosion uh, so what happens suppose uh, this is my met suppose uh, we have one material over this what will happen this metal oxide will form as a, a scale so what will happen after some time oxygen ion will uh, uh, will uh, trans uh, will transport through that uh, scale and goes to combine with metal ion so metal oxide will form or metal oil can transport through that film or through that scale and goes to uh, oxygen ion and it will combine to metal oxide form so formation so in that sense metal oxide will act as an electrolyte where ions transport it takes place but since we don't have any conventional type of uh, electrolyte like water so we uh, segregate it from that electrochemical corrosion mechanism okay now based on the corrosive gas uh, high temperature corrosion is uh, divided into different types like if it is oxygen then we call it oxygen oxidation corrosion if it is sulfur then we call it sulfidic corrosion 
if it is hydrogen then we call it high temperature hydrogen attack likewise so we will discuss at length about all these different type of corrosion these all different type of corrosion occurs in different units of uh, refinery we will discuss at length so these these uh, this discussion was all about uh, types of corrosion based on mechanism now if we take the basis the appearance of the corroded material like uh, after corrosion how corroded material look likes then if we take that basis then corrosion is divided into eight different forms so how does it look like based on that uh, uh, appearance like uh, now these different forms can generated due to uh, either by electrochemical reaction or by chemical reaction for example one is uniform corrosion or general corrosion it can uh, it can uh, appear either by electrochemical reaction or by chemical reactions okay so these are the eight different forms in the first uh, this is uniform corrosion where material corroded uniformly throughout and rest other form is highly localized where corrosion does not uh, Uh, occurs uniformly throughout the materials so localized corrosion is also different types one is called galvanic corrosion another is crevice corrosion under deposit comes uh, corrosion comes under crevice corrosion it usually occurs in overhead section of different columns pitting corrosion very detrimental we will discuss at length about all these different forms erosion corrosion fretting corrosion in fretting what happens due to fretting action again bar, uh, again and again uh, layer will erode out so uh, e fretting corrosion is a part of erosion corrosion cavitation co erosion occurs in boilers and others different sections dealloying corrosion where like in brass copper and zinc will uh, separate because of this corrosion so uh, material will not having alloy property intergranular corrosion is again a very important corrosion in a stainless steel we'll discuss at length a stress corrosion cracking it also include cyclic stress by which corrosion fatigue occurs and hydrogen embrittlement hydrogen induced cracking is also under this stress corrosion cracking so we'll discuss all these different types of uh, corrosion forms uh, at length in our subsequent lecture and what uh, i understand that these all different uh, corrosion forms appears in one or another units in refinery and mostly in single ref uh, refine a uh, single unit also uh, there could be more than one forms even based on appearance it will be, uh, sometime it will be very difficult to uh, identify which um, by which type this uh, corrosion has occurred uh, because sometimes uh, one or two corrosion forms overlaps so we'll discuss all uh, about this at length and in subsequent lecture now the, to move for uh, before we move forward uh, let us uh, try to uh, uh, try to understand that how we quantify the corrosion and for quantification of corrosion we, we get uh, we know that there is a unit called mils per year mils is nothing but 1 mils is 1 by 1000 inch and it basically decide that the how much thinning of the material uh, has been take uh, taken place due to corrosion so if mils per year means in one year if uh, say suppose 10 mils per year is there so 10 mils uh, material has been corroded in one year so higher the mils per year higher the higher is uh, rate of corrosion so how we uh, calculate that mils per year in order to calculate the rate of corrosion uh, what we do we first uh, take out the weight loss due to corrosion and we know that density of the material area which was in directly contact in uh, uh, in the corrosive environment and the time for which the corrosive environment and the material was in contact with corrosive environment when we uh, get to know all these things then we can calculate mils per year by this corrosion rate expression okay now for for today's lecture uh, this uh, i'm going to stop uh, here and in the next lecture we will discuss about the 
types of material which uh, we use in refinery and after that we will discuss about the properties of material because uh, uh, many of the corrosion mechanism what it does it changes the properties of material and so to understand the corrosion mechanism thoroughly it is imperative to understand that what are the different uh, properties of material and how does it change due to corrosion and uh, we will also uh, discuss a very important concept of corrosion is what is called is passivation so all these thing we'll discuss in the next lecture and after that lecture we will discuss about the different forms of corrosions and after that we will discuss uh, corrosion in refineries uh, different types of corrosion usually which occurs in refinery at different units okay thanks thank you for uh, watching this lecture